Hello everyone and thanks for stopping by and checking out the channel. If you like what we're doing here, please like and subscribe and hit the bell notification to know when we're posting new videos and things. Um, today we're going to get back to basics and we're going to we'll talk about um, the volumes of water required for via brewing sessions. Um, if you're an extract brewer, the only real difference is really starts before the boil. Once the boil begins, it's just like extract brewing at that point. So we want to talk about the water calculation that you're going to need since this is a full volume um, process. So the part of the calculation is to come up with how much strike water we need to start at the beginning and get us all the way through to bottling and kegging. We have to get all the way through and the goal is not to have to add any more water. So to get started, we need a calculator. We're going to use a real simple one that we have on our website that you can check it out at buyabrewing.com and we'll put a link below to that so you can get to it. So besides the calculator, you're also going to need a copy of the all grain brewing recipe you're going to do. Um, just a standard all grain brew recipe, nothing special for buy up. That's all you'll need for that. Um, we're going to need to calculate your setup's boil off rate and I'll show you how to do that. Um, the grain temperature you'll need the day of the brew session, uh, your kettle's interior diameter if you want to use a method we have on the calculator to help you decide how much water you have in the kettle if you don't have a site class. There are a couple of other numbers that you're going to need. Um, the fermentation shrub loss, the uh, grain absorption rate, and the hop absorption rate. Um, for those, uh, they could change with the recipes. Um, I would leave them at the defaults for now just to kind of get started and you can see how your numbers fall and you can dial those in as you, as you go along. Um, if you don't have a site glass like I do now and I didn't used to have one, uh, the calculator will help you figure out um, basically by measuring inches or centimeters how many gallons you have in your kettle. And then it's set her up around as long as the kettle is around 68 degrees in the temperature. So um, what you do, as long as it's going to be a symmetrical kettle like that, it's a flat bottom, which this one is, you measure the interior diameter of it and you put it into the calculator and it's going to give you, in the end of it, it's going to tell you how much your strike water is going to be to initially fill it up, but it also will tell you what one gallon or liter is in inches or centimeters. So I used to use a stainless steel paddle that I would put some stainless steel hose clamps on and could put my initial measurement, just measure that off, whatever it said it was, stick it inside there, fill up really quick, didn't take a long time to fill up the kettle, and um, could also set a couple of other ones if I wanted to have a couple of other measurements along the way to kind of get some other targets in place. So that works out pretty well for that also. Um, next, we will estimate the boil off rate of the kettle. So that's going to be something where we're going to um, fill up, let's say, fill this up to five gallons of water. Go ahead and put it on whatever you're using, using a, a, a burner or whatever you're using, you know, indoor or outdoor. Bring it up to a rolling boil. Once you're at a rolling boil, go ahead and start a timer for 60 minutes. And at the end of 60 minutes, let it cool down to about 68 degrees. And go ahead and take a measurement. And of course, that difference will be what your boil off rate was per hour. That we all know what that is for the calculation. Understand that you're going to need a pretty big kettle to uh, brew five gallons worth of beer um, using buy -out. You're going to have a lot of strike water to put in there. And then you're going to have displacement when you put all your grains in there. So if you go and you buy a seven gallon turkey fryer, that is not gonna be big enough to brew five gallons, but you could scale that recipe down to three gallons, and in most cases, probably be able to use that kind of setup to get yourself started. So that's certainly one way to go. So here we are at my website, um, buyabrewing.com. You just go under uh, Brew Day Prep and click on the calculator uh, link here below. And you scroll down, and here's the one that we have, a real simple one that's built right into the site. That's kind of how we base this video. So right here, you can enter in um, for whatever you enter on this side. is going to convert it for you into liters on the other side or in metric. So you can enter the batch size you want. In this case, I'm going to leave it at five gallons. Um, you can enter the weight of the grain bill. In this case, it was eight pounds, and the total weight of the hops, that's going to give it to you that in ounces. It puts the total in there. Go to the recipe you have. It'll tell you what the actual boil time on the recipe is. In this case, it's 60 minutes. And your equipment's boil off rate per hour, and that's what you figured out earlier when you did that calculation. So um, how many gallons you had originally in there before we boiled. Um, after uh, we boiled, what was the difference? This is a half a gallon. That's what I normally use in my setup here. So it gives me the idea of what that uh, loss is per hour. Um, expected fermentation trub loss. Again, it, that will vary recipe to recipe. 
as well. In this case, I'm leaving it at, at the default and probably want to leave it there as well. And same thing with the uh, grain absorption rate default value. Okay, and I'm going to leave it there as well. Um, hop absorption rate, same thing. Uh, leave it there. You can mess with those as you continue to dial in your numbers. Um, your grain temperature, that's something you're going to actually just literally stick a thermometer in the day you're going to brew. So you see what it's at. That's going to help get that strike water number right. Um, and to the mash temperature from the recipe, again, right off the recipe. And um, your interior kettle uh, dimensions, you probably did that earlier because you would have needed to have already put that in there to get your um, how many uh, converting your um, your kettle diameter into inches for gallons and, or centimeters if you wanted to in either case. So once it's all there and you're all calculated, it'll update as you go along. Um, you will end up with what your strike water needs to be at. In this case, it's 7.1 gallons. So you can go ahead and, you know, figure out 1.58 in, inches and then express that in your gallons and you can go ahead and um, measure that out and stick some, whatever you're going to use. And you can use a tape measure, whatever, whatever you want. Um, because it's water that I'm brewing with, I like stainless steel, but there's other things you can use as well. Um, and then this tells you what temperature you need to bring that strike water too, so that when you add those cooler grains to it, it will end up hopefully at 152 degrees. So you're going to bring the water up to 156.6. Once you add those cooler grains that are measured in at 71.2, it should end up at 152, 152 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so that's pretty much how the calculator works. So now you know how much strike water you'll need and what temperature to bring it to before you add your grain so you can get your strike temperature right. Um, you'll also know how to easily measure um, how much water you can put in your kettle without having to have a site class. So hopefully all of this will kind of help you get started you know, in bio brewing and understanding a little bit of, of, how it all, of how it all works. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below and uh, hope to see you next time.